G'day to my Year 8 champions. Hope you guys are all doing okay. Welcome back to Mathematics for your next algebra lesson. We're going to start off with a quick riddle. So today's riddle is, I am more useful when I am broken. What am I? Potentially a few correct answers for this. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Once again, first uh, correct answer, free six-month subscription to Mathematics. Starting off with some revision questions from last lesson. I want you to see if you can remember how to expand these three expressions. Okay, so pause the video and have a go by yourself. All right, so for the first answer, if you got 8x minus 48, so once again, we're doing the 8 at the front, multiplying to both things inside. So 8 times x is 8x, 8, 8 times minus 6 is minus 48. Okay, next one is a little bit trickier. We get an answer of 2a squared plus 18a, okay? So the 2a multiplied with a is 2a squared, because a times a is a squared. And 2a times 9, well, 9 lots of 2a will be 18a. And now for the third one, we've got a triple expansion. We're going to multiply everything inside by 2s. And well done if you got 2s times x is 2sx. And we have a minus, and we have 2s times 3y would be 6sy. Now we have a plus, and 2 times 10 is 20, and s times z, we write sz. All right, if you got all those right, you are now ready for the next phase of algebra, which is called factorizing. So there is your heading if you are taking notes. Uh, I will warn you that, in my opinion, this is the most challenging part of year 8 algebra. Factorizing is a concept that most people find pretty challenging at first until you start to see the patterns and get used to the concept, okay? So to introduce factorizing, we're going to start off with a couple of sort of warm-up questions about thinking backwards. So you've just had a lesson on how to expand algebra expressions. In this one, I want to see if you can force your mind to work backwards, okay? Here is the answer, 2x plus 10 after something has been expanded. I'm giving you a hint that out the front is a 2. I want you to think what would go inside this bracket here, inside these parentheses, so that when you expand it by multiplying everything by 2, you get 2x plus 10. Okay, so we're thinking what can we multiply with 2 to get us 2x? And the answer is x, okay? What can we multiply with 2 to get an answer of 10? That would be 5. So if you can see that what's inside here needs to be x plus 5, that's good, you're on the right track. Okay, if we expanded this, we get 2x plus 2 times 10, and there is our answer. A little bit harder now. For the second one, the answer is 5x minus 35. I want you to think of what the question could be, such that when you expand it, you get 5x minus 35. So the way we're going to approach this is we're going to look at 5x, and we're going to look at 35, and we're going to see what is something that could be multiplying to both of these. Uh, obviously, 1 is an answer, but that's very boring. If you can see that there's a 5 multiplying in both of these, because this is 5 times x, and this is 5 times 7, that's good. Okay, We have identified what our factor is. That is what's going to go out the front, the 5. Okay. So now, like we did before, what is going to multiply with 5 to make 5x? Well, it'll be x. We're going to have a minus inside, just like this minus here, and 5 multiplied by 7 would give us 35, so inside we have x minus 7, okay? So that process of going from an answer to what the question might have been, it's kind of like expanding in backwards, that is what factorizing is, okay? So if I asked you to factorize 2x plus 10, the answer would be 2 outside of x plus 5, okay? So you've got to look at the two terms and you've got to try and see what is in common and then you've got to work backwards to factorize your answer, okay? So this to this is expanding, and so this back to where you started is factorizing. Probably worth writing that down, just so you have something in your notes to refer to. All right, if you've written that down, we can uh, do some more examples. I find that this is, like I said, pretty confusing at first, but after you see a few examples, you sort of get into the habit of it, okay? All right, let's take a look at some examples, give you guys a better idea of how this works. So here are some easier ones, but definitely not easy. We're going to unexpand, aka factorize, these five expressions. 
If you think you can already see some of them, I encourage you to pause and have a go. But if you need me to do a few first to give you an idea, that's perfectly fine. All right, so for the first one, we're looking at 7x and we're looking at 14. And we're thinking, what's something that is going to multiply into both of these two? Okay, hopefully you can see that answer is 7 because we have 7 times x here and we have 7 times 2 here. Okay, so because this is 7 times x, we're going to have an x here. And because this is 7 times 2, we're going to have a plus 2 in the brackets. Okay, so our answer is 7 outside of x plus 2. And if you're not sure at first, these questions are very easy to check because you can just expand your answer and see if you get back where you started. So 7 times x, 7x. 7, x. 7 times plus 2, plus 14. It works. All right, next one, we got 3y and 36. We're looking for a common factor. Uh, we can say that's 3 because we have 3 times y here and we have 3 times 12 here. So these questions are much easier if you're pretty good at your times tables. Otherwise, they can sometimes take you a while to find what that factor is. In this case, it's going to be 3. All right, so what's inside? We're going to have, well, this is 3 times y. So we're going to have y here. And like I said, this is 3 times 12, and it's a plus, so we're going to have a plus 12 inside our parenthesis. Okay, so common factor out the front, and what's left over from the multiplication inside. Okay, next one, hopefully you can see the common factor is 10 for both of these. So we're going to do 10 out the front of a bracket. Uh, this is 10 times a, so we'll have an a here. And we've got a minus, so we'll have a minus inside our parenthesis. And this is 10 times 6, so we'll have a minus 6. And there we have it, 10 outside of a minus 6. Okay. Now for the next one, again, these are all pretty easy to start off with. The common factor is all just the front number. This one is the same. It's a common factor of 6 in both of these two guys. So we'll take 6 out the front. And now this is 6 times m. And hopefully you know 42 is 6 times 7. So we're going to have m minus 7 inside our bracket. A little bit of a tricky one at the end. We've got x squared and we've got 5x. And we're saying, what's something that's multiplying in both of these two? Uh, there's no number with this one because the common factor is actually x. Okay, because x squared is x times x. And this is 5 times x. So both of these guys are being multiplied by an x. So that is our common factor out the front. Okay, this is x times x, so we'll have an x in here. This is x times 5, so we'll have a plus 5 in here. And there is your factorization. Awesome job if you got some of those by yourself, or if you're still learning, maybe you can rewind the video and try them yourself and see if you get these answers. All right, let's look at some slightly tougher ones to sort of stretch our abilities. So here's some four factorizations. If you think you're getting it, you're encouraged to pause and try yourself. But again, these ones are a bit tougher. All right, so in the first one, we've got 4a squared minus 24a. We're looking for a common multiplier. So we have a 4 here, and 24 is 6 times 4. So there's a common factor of 4 in both. And then also like the last one, we have an a squared here, and we have an a here. So we can factor out a 4, and we can also factor out an a. So out the front of our bracket is going to be a 4a. Okay, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I could have taken 2 out of these two as well. Yes, you could, but we're always trying to look for the biggest possible thing to go out the front, because then it will be fully factorized, not partially factorized, okay? So 4a out the front, and then what's left over in here is one of the a's. We've got a minus, and then what's left over here is the times 6. Okay, so we've got 4a times a is 4a squared, minus, minus, and we've got 4a times 6 is 24a. All right, and we're trying to do that backwards, which is why this is pretty difficult at first. For the next one, we have uh, a common factor. Hopefully you can see that there's a common factor of 8, because this is 8 times x, and this is 8 times 2. But we can also take the negative at the front because there's a negative in both. So if you wanted to, you could take negative eight out the front. What would be left over here is the x. And the tricky part is that what's left here is now positive. Okay, this is more clear if you work backwards because negative eight x, sorry, negative eight times x is negative eight x. And negative eight times two is negative 16. Okay, so when you're factoring a negative out of a negative, you're actually going to get a positive answer. 
okay? Because this is kind of the logic of a negative multiplying with a positive gets you a negative. It's that logic just in reverse, okay? All right, and for the next one, we have 12y and 20xy. So there's a common y in both, but this one's a bit tricky because 12 doesn't come out of uh, both numbers evenly. So we've got to think, what's a number that is the highest factor of 12 and 20? So a number that multiplies into 12 and into 20. Uh, if you can see that is four, that's good because 12 is four times three and 20 is four times five. So our highest common factor of these two terms that we can take out the front of our parenthesis is going to be 4y. Okay, so we got 4y out the front. 4y dividing out of 12y leaves us with 3. And 4y dividing out of 20y, so we're asking ourselves 4y multiplied with what gets us 20xy. All right, and the answer for that is 5x. Again, you can very quickly check these by expanding. 4y times 3 is 12y. 4y times 5x, well, 4 times 5 is 20. y times x is xy. All right, and our next one's uh, a bit of a weird one as well because we have, kind of like in question C, we have a common factor of m in both terms, but our numbers are 8 and 9. Okay, and there's actually no common factor in these two apart from one, but one's a factor of everything, so it doesn't even really count. So we can't actually factor out a number. All we can factor out is the m. That's what we'll do. We'll take the m out the front. m out of 8m squared will leave us with 8m, and m out of minus 9mn leaves us with the minus 9n. So that's our answer there. Okay, m times 8m is 8m squared, m times minus 9n is minus 9mn. Tongue twister. All right, so those are definitely challenging examples. If you are getting those correct and you're starting to see the pattern of how to factorize and you're looking for a real challenge, I'm going to put some more challenging ones up now. Uh, these are optional, really only for the top level classes, but of course, everyone is welcome to try. Factorizing these, sorry, this is our expert mode question. So if you can get these, these are like year nine level questions, okay? So if you think you're ready, you can pause and try and factorize, or if you want to watch me do it to get an idea, of course, that's fine. So with the first question, instead of having two terms, we now have three terms, but our process is the exact same, okay? We look at all three terms and we look for a common factor. We've got 12a, negative 24b, and positive 36c. There are no common letters, so there's nothing algebraic we can factor out, but 12, 24, and 36 are all multiples of 12. So 12 is a common factor that we can factor out the front. Okay, if we divide 12 out of these three, we get a, we get minus 2b, and we get plus 3c. So that is our factorization. All right, which is pretty gnarly, but it's the exact same process just with an extra term, so a little bit extra work. So instead of checking two terms for a common factor, you're checking three terms for a common factor. Likewise, for the next one, we have three terms. We are looking for a common factor. Again, we've got R, S, and T, so there's no common algebra, unfortunately. We've just got to look at the numbers. We've got minus 8, minus 18, and minus 10. So we're trying to think of the highest common factor of those three numbers. I'll give you a second to think about it. So eight doesn't work, um, four doesn't work. The only thing that's gonna work for this is two, okay? Two is the only number apart from one. There's a factor of all three. And because all three are negative, we may as well factor out a negative two. All right, if we're factoring a negative out of these three negative terms, it's gonna turn them all into positive terms. All right, so eight divided by two is gonna be four, so we get four R. If we divide these two by two, we get nine S and five T. All right, and they're all positive because when we multiply them by negative two, they're all gonna turn negative and give us the original question, okay? All right, and the very last one, the ultimate challenge. We have 60x minus 25xy plus 35x squared y. So if we look at the algebra, we've got x, xy, 
x squared y, there's a common factor of x in all three. So we can take an x out of the out of the terms. 60, 25, and 35. What's the common factor of all those three? Looks to me like it is 5. So we're going to factor out 5x out of all three terms. Okay, uh, 5x taken out of 60x leaves us with 12 because 5 times 12 is 60. We're going to have factored out of here, we're going to have minus 5y. Okay, we've divided out the x and 25 or negative 25 divided by 5 is going to be minus 5. And then for this last term, if we divide 5x out, well, 35 divided by 5 will be 7. x squared divided by x leaves us with x, and you've still got the y there. So if you manage to figure out that this one is 5x outside of 12 minus 5y plus 7xy, you are an absolute genius, and you are killing this. Okay, if those three didn't make heaps of sense to you, I wouldn't stress too much. As long as you're getting the basic ones, that's really all you need at this stage in year eight. You're going to be building upon that, hopefully in year nine, and then, yeah, challenging yourself. So, all right, hopefully you learned something. Now that you have seen this, you can have a go at the factorizing tasks that I've put on MathSpace for you guys. As always, if you're struggling and need more help, I'm just one email away. And we'll finish today off in Dank Meme Corner. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something or you got better at something and I'll see you guys next time.